Hey folks, it's Shane from Form TV. Happy New Year! Welcome to 2021. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So for those of you new to this channel, this is where I put electric motors into fun and interesting cars. My current project is to put a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. Now, I've been doing it for a little while now. It's probably a good 18 months or nearly two years on the go, but we're getting there. And this year, I think is the year we're gonna get it on the road. We're really close. Last week, I threw up a, just before the end of the year, I threw up a bit of a retrospective on 2020 and looking at all the, the things that I've managed to achieve on the car. There were challenges, some of them because of the car itself, some of them because of the, the world we're living in at the moment, but it's getting there and I, f I feel I made good progress. And I wanna, what I want to do in this video is just talk about what we're doing to move it forward, both in terms of the car and in terms of the channel. So yeah, I hope you'll join me as I uh, take you through our plans for 2021. So let's talk about the car first. So as you've probably seen from the last video, we're at the point now where we've kind of proven the, the, the plan I have for the car more or less works. So I've stripped everything back to put things in properly. So things like the engine mounts, they were good enough for testing, they're not gonna be good enough for the road. Certainly, I doubt any automotive engineer would sign off on them as being you know, suitable. <laughs> um, and likewise, we were using only a temporary battery, so now we've got to get the, the main battery in place. Um, but apart from that, we're, we're actually in a pretty good place. You know, the, the electronics, the ancillary systems, like the brake booster, the power steering, that's all there and ready to go. So the big focus really for the next few weeks is gonna be on the battery box and the motor. So with the battery box, we've built the battery out to its kind of main planned shape. And now the focus is on actually building something that will go around it. Because of where the battery sits in the, is gonna sit in the car, um, I have to put a, a, you know, a fair bit of effort into the design and build of this, both to make sure it bolts in properly and securely because it's about 200 kilos or you know 400 and something 450 odd pounds of battery in there uh, that I do not want to come loose. So that's got to be able to be fitted securely and it's also got to be waterproof because it's sitting underneath the back of the car exposed to the elements where the engine was. An engine getting hit by water not so much of a problem. Battery getting hit by water if it's not enclosed in something big problem. So I've had to spend quite a lot of time kind of tweaking ideas for how to how to build it out. But now I think I'm at the point where I've got enough of the bases covered in terms of what I'm designing and what I'm planning that I can actually just start building it. So let's take a look at where we are and what we're thinking of doing. So that's the battery side of things. Then we've also got the motor. So the original mounts that I did for the motor basically had some extra reinforcement attached between the two frame rails. Um, that sit over the the rear wheels and it was suspended from that but it wasn't it wasn't the strongest setup um i think it would have been very prone to to kind of moving uh, if the you know the forces going through it were a bit too much and it's an electric motor there's a lot of torque from pretty much nowhere um so i've got to be careful with that and with building that i have to I had to think about you know what options there were, what things I could bolt it to in the in the Porsche engine bay, and to be honest, I was running out of ideas. Um, so I was thinking I was just going to have to reinforce what I originally planned. But then I identified a new Porsche part. Well, not a new Porsche part, a different part um, that was available that didn't come standard on my car, but fits in and would actually help me a lot. So. I'll give you a sneak peek and then in a week or two we'll do a video and I'll talk you through exactly what we're planning to do with that. So that's the battery and motor. Um, once they're in the car, then the next step is just to bolt in the uh, drive shafts that I built up uh, a couple of months ago. So the ones I got, the actual shafts professionally built, I've rebuilt the CV joints around those. Those are ready to go, they just need to be bolted into the car once the motor's in place. And that is then that side of the car good to go. Um, obviously I'll need to do the necessary wiring to go between the battery and the um, inverter and motor, 
but that will then allow us to drive. Uh, still got a few things to figure out around charging, but I'm gonna wait until everything's in the car um, before I start working on that. Um, Cause at least, you know, there's at least probably 50 or 60 miles where the charge left in the battery. So I can go do something with it um, while trying to figure out the charging side of things. But that will effectively give us a, a car that can move. Um, obviously there's still some of the work required on the car. So the, the body work where the, um, where the uh, rust had kind of come through in the, the rear sills. Um, I've got metal for that. Uh, so it's just a quest gonna be a question of cutting making sure it's all cut out of the car, figuring out what shape it's gonna be, and then trying to just bend and massage that m new metal into the right shape before welding it in. A um, lot of steps there. Takes a little while to, to do well, uh, but we'll, we'll get it in and then I'll be in a position to, to hopefully take it on the road. I did find basically the same rust on the other side of the car. Um, so I'm gonna to have to do that twice. And then we've got the other rusty bits that I found, but fortunately that was just a bracket that needed to be bolted in um, so I've managed to find a couple of those on eBay just went for the cheapest ones I could get that didn't look as rusty uh, so I'll give them a good clean up uh, lick of paint and then we'll just bolt them into the car um, to yeah replace what's there so there's nothing that you know uh, an MOT inspector can look at and, and think this car needs to fail or this car isn't taken care of because while it might have suffered by some of its previous owners I'm taking care of it and I intend to keep on taking care of it. So that's kind of where we are with the car. I hope you'll join me as we as I move through the, the process of getting it up and running and onto the onto the road. But I also wanted to talk a bit about what I'm planning for the channel itself. So this channel has been going for a couple of years now and it you know it's been kind of organic in terms of how how things happen. It's just been whatever happens with the car has decided what um, what my schedule is gonna be like what the topic's going to be. And I think that's it, you know, created a bit of an ebb and flow in terms of striking the balance and doing the, doing the topics in the way I want to do them. So I see this as, yes, it's an automotive YouTube channel, but very much with a focus on the EV side of things. Um, and I want to make sure there's a good balance between, you know, the fun of doing work on cars and, and getting things fixed or modified or upgraded and also the the EV conversion um, side of things and then just EV technology in general and, and I've definitely received some really good feedback from the the videos that I did you know maybe earlier in the, the series where I was looking at some of the components and kind of explaining things in around them or trying to get them to work and, and that sort of stuff so what I'm planning to do is to reintroduce some of that side of things. So we've had a look at the leaf components, but there are a ton of other EV components out there. So I did a bit of a scour on eBay and bought a few. So when I've got the time, when it kind of is maybe getting a little bit too uh, car maintenance focused on the, the work I'm doing on the Porsche, I'll you know, break into one of those and we'll take a look inside and see how things work, you know, try and get a, a different EV motor work running on the bench. Um, and yeah, go from there. So let me show you, give you a sneak peek of what I've got. Of course, having all these EV components just sitting there on a shelf is all well and good. And if I get them running on the bench, even better. But then what's the point in having them? And I think I've really enjoyed doing what I'm doing on this channel. And uh, I've definitely received you know, positive feedback from people. So I wanna keep this channel going um, beyond this project. So now I've got to start thinking about, right, with these additional components, what can I put them in? And see, are there, there are other cars that I could do as, a, as an EV project, you know, maybe tackle things slightly differently. The way I'm doing the Porsche is one way to do things, but there are, you know, different ways you can tackle different problems. There are different ways of tackling the entire project. Um, so I'd like to, you know, look at maybe doing a second EV conversion once this one's on the road, even if it's not reached the point where it's producing the full power I want it to. If I've got it on the road, 
that's a good milestone. I'm going to keep on working on it because I do want to hit that 220 odd kilowatts that the original Porsche engine put out. Um, but you know what? I could always do another project while, while working on uh, upgrading that. So watch this space. Um, I have some ideas around which cars I'd like to look at um, and I hope you'll enjoy them and uh, yeah, join me on the, the journey to, to electrify them. So we're trying to grow this channel um, you know, beyond just a me doing one project and then it vanishing off into the into the ether of the internet. Um, I do take feedback seriously, as, as I've said a number of times. Um, I, know, I know many of you will have, if you've been watching the videos for a while or you've gone back and watched the back catalogue, I hope you'll have seen that there have been improvements since the early days. Um, I think some of my video has gotten better. The audio, I hope, has gotten much, much better, as has my delivery. Um, it's a little bit stayed in the in the early uh, early uh, videos as I got used to talking to a little metal box on a tripod. So I want to continue improving. Um, so I'm going to keep on trying to, to make little changes that will hopefully make these videos more enjoyable. So I've been struggling for a little while with the light quality here in the garage and actually being able to do stuff in here and show you how it is when it's not you know bright sunlight outside that I can kind of leverage. So I've invested in some new lighting, uh, which I'm going to be putting up. I've got a third of it up, I've got another few bits to put it put in um, over the next few weeks. And then when we get the Porsche back into the car, into the garage, uh, should be able to do much better quality video on that. Um, I've also got a few new toys to play with around audio and I've also started using a, a better version of the um, video editing software I've been using so I can put up video at higher quality. So I think I would traditionally done it at 720. We're now able to put it up at 1080. If I get some better cameras and we've got things like 4K, that becomes an option. So that's to say, you know, I'm always investing in this channel, trying to make it better. Um, if you've got any ideas of things I can improve, as always, do you know, let me know in the comment section. Um, it all is always really appreciated. And I hope you'll really enjoy these improvements as they come through in the future videos. So that's where we are in my little segment of YouTube. Um, we've got big plans for this year. I'm gonna hit those milestones of actually getting the car on the road, but I also wanna take this channel up a notch and yeah, really push, push for producing something interesting that inspires people, that gives people ideas, helps them educate themselves on things. Uh, and just kind of gives back to the the EV community, the EV conversion community, especially, um, you know, that I kind of follow through through other channels or through other forums. So I hope you like what you what we're planning for this year. And you know, if this is something that you enjoy and you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Uh, hit the bell icon if you want to get notified when new content comes out. And yeah, you know. As always, likes and comments are really appreciated and I try to get back to as many as I can. Apologies if I miss them, um, but I do eventually tend to read everything. But yeah, um, thanks for joining me at this little ramble and I hope you'll come back next in the next video when we'll actually get working on the car.